Why, hello, it is I, Chris Brogan, and welcome to this, your episode of The Brief for Thursday, the 2nd of November, 2017. Missed a few days. I had no power for several days, so that was my brief. The way this works is I share some ideas and trends that might help you in some way improve your business. My concept is we're looking at any kind of ways that we can use technology to change our lives or businesses by driving better human interaction. I share stories that I find all over the web and share them with you at chrisbrogan.com slash CBM so that you don't have to read my uh, advice or my insights. You can take a look. All the links are there for yourself. Feel free to take a look at them at your leisure. I make this using Ecamm Live. It's the best way to do Facebook Live for Mac. Do check it out. It's definitely worth it. And I bring you a variety of stories that cover usually some mix of technologies that I think might be helpful for future trends, some lifestyle type of ideas, and quite often plant-based stuff. And then I always end with something kind of nerdy because why shouldn't I? Well, would you pay $1 to allow a robot to diagnose you medically instead of a doctor? Well, the dollar part sounds really good. For a dollar, an AI will examine your medical scan. Pretty interesting news as reported by Engadget. I don't know if anyone's going to rush out to get this done right away, but in the world where healthcare is more and more cost prohibitive and it's harder and harder for people to get adequate healthcare, especially in the United States, if there is suddenly a very cheap option to get some kind of diagnostic opportunity, it may very well be that people decide that that's what they're going to do. So I don't know, but I think it's something to look at. Well, maybe you won't let a robot diagnose your medical illnesses, but maybe you'll talk to a robot for sex advice. Yep, Durex came out with a chatbot that deals with just that. It is a sex guru. Uh, you can have one that's called Rex, and I think there's also a female one, so you can decide if you wanna to talk to a fellow or a woman about your sex advice. And there's all kinds of information, and the, the uptake on this, it turns out people are very much in, engaging and spending time with this. Now, the other day on LinkedIn, I saw a, a post that was shared by a guy who is a, an insurance agent, and he was, offended because it listed the things that were annoying about insurance as including insurance agents. And in this article by someone in the insurance industry, they were saying, you know, what if you could do away with all that? And I thought, I know that this person's offended, but I wonder if buyers care whether or not they talk to a human to buy their insurance. It turns out maybe you can have chatbot insurance. So this isn't anywhere in the United States or anything. This is in New Zealand, but there is a uh, company called Cove that is going to do insurance via chatbot. And when you think about it, there are always exceptions. There are always things that you can't ask a, a chatbot or a robot of any kind. But it is definitely interesting to take note that this is one area where they're already looking at ways to augment and automate and put a chatbot in place for what human agents would do. When I thought about it, I thought, well, if it seemed smart enough to figure out what I needed in my life, it probably would do the job. I don't know. What do you think? Why are digital assistants so hot right now? Why is she who shall not be named, otherwise she'll make a noise, or the other one right beside it? This is a huge space. It looks like these kinds of assistants will almost double in 2018, reaching more than $12 billion with 1.6 billion active users. Pretty kind of nutty if you look at it. And there are all kinds of other people joining into that space. I have been working with these voice ambient computing technologies for just under a year now. And when I say working with everything from just taking care of things like basic timers to answering questions that I have, to adding different services like recipe platforms and things like that. There's all different kinds of ways, but we are going to get to a place really soon where touching keys or even thumbs on glass might not be the way we're gonna interface. And I think we all should spend a little bit of time figuring out what we're going to do with uh, you know, these new technologies and how your service or platform is going to interact with that sort of a thing. I very often cite stats from the US Department of Bureau and Labor Statistics uh, or U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, I don't know. And I wanted to put a link in this most recent issue of the brief just to some of the things that people are doing with their time. So for instance, average hours a day spent in certain leisure activities and sports and whatnot by sex. So it was saying that one of the things we do the most is entertainment. Now I've been saying this for a very long time, but what you should note is probably the smallest piece of this whole graph is reading. 
and reading is this tiny, tiny bunch of flecks down at the bottom there. And so every time I tell people that we are in a scenario where people are not paying as much attention anymore, people are not reading anymore, that's where I'm getting that from. So, oh, I just did something crazy. Did not mean to do whatever I just did. Ah, that's what I meant to do. Hi, Gareth. How are you? So anyway, that is a link to the U.S. Department of Bureau of Statistics. I mean, there's a lot more stuff there. So I talk a lot about blockchain. I think that it's really important that you start learning about blockchain right now. You can go to chrisbrogan.com slash blockchain to see an article that I wrote that just collects a whole bunch of different ways to learn about it. So you don't have to take my version of explaining it. I show you in courses, books, podcasts, YouTube videos, uh, long articles, you name it. But this is interesting because this article came out from Advertising Age with 27 different ways that marketers can use blockchain. One of the things that I think you'll want to take note of is that a lot of what I saw in their 27 different ways, the word verify was the most common word. And that really ties to what um, blockchain does the best is it's a sort of a ledger system, which in and of itself feels and sounds a little kind of boring. You kind of go, whoa, whatever. But this is going to be big business in lots of different ways. And people are just as uncertain of how to use it and implement it as they have been with the internet back in 1998, all the way into the mid 2000s, if you think about it. So there's opportunities. One story I reported last week, or maybe even the week before, was that MIT is issuing their graduate certificate program information, or maybe all of their uh, certificates and um, diplomas now, also via blockchain. This is talking about, oh, I wonder if I could say no thank you. Uh, there we go. This is in the area of micro-credentials. Institutions are looking to blockchain to verify learning. So this is going to be interesting insofar as you can have a very simple micro-credential blockchain that you can point people towards that say, here's the stuff that I know how to do. Here's my capabilities as verified by these various institutions. That's interesting stuff. That's starting to point towards, you know, Sometimes people conflate their skills and abilities. Sometimes people say that they know how to do this or that they went here or there. But again, what blockchain does the best is it validates and verifies a lot of things. And so there's an opportunity now to really pay attention to that. I'm always looking for trends where something is really shifting in a way that we just wouldn't suspect it. We wouldn't believe this is where it goes next. And this one's interesting to me. It would appear that the debut of Stranger Things 2 on Netflix hurt the American box office so much that Jigsaw was the number one movie, but not by very much because the weekend most of the people stayed in and ended up spending their time uh, watching and paying attention to um, Stranger Things instead. Oh, what is going on? Oh, <laughs> I was hitting the wrong button. Oh, I don't know what is with me today. So anyway, I found that a very interesting story. But speaking about staying in and spending time on your own stuff, it's very interesting to note that we are building and buying all kinds of platforms that allow us to make our own shows. HQ looks like it might be the future of both mobile gaming and live TV. I think that that's a little bit of uh, hyperbole. I don't think that people are going to drop everything and join HQ. But I've seen variations on things like this. I mean, way back in the seismic days, there were live, live opportunities to uh, do game shows. And there were some really fun ones that people put together. And Twitch has this. And there's all kinds of platforms. But HQ is pull out your phone and start a game show kind of a thing. That's worth paying attention. So John points out, wow, that actually hurts the box office. Totally. So it, it's interesting that we can see Netflix taking a dig into the land of the box office. So again, in trends that I find interesting, it appears that millennials are not choosing to live anywhere near golf courses, which has been a mainstay for uh, baby boomers and evidently some Gen Xers, although I would sooner live next to anything but a golf course. They are instead looking to what are called agri-hoods. So they're looking to move to places where there's a local community farm nearby and some kind of space where you can do all kinds of information. Uh, and uh, ways of living that fit their needs. And so now agri-hoods are becoming the thing instead of living somewhere near a golf course. 
As sports are changing, whether or not it's good, bad, or otherwise, it is very interesting to point out that the International Olympic Committee is considering what it's going to take if they want to include esports in the Olympics. I have longed for the day where my incredible abilities at Destiny or Rainbow Six Siege could translate into an Olympic career. I would love to stand on a pedestal just like Michael Phelps and receive my badge for the most headshots in a game or something like that. Well, maybe it is not for me, but it could very well likely be a sport that we see in the U.S. I mean, in the World Olympics, the U.S. Olympics. All right. If you still think esports is really kooky, you could say that Intel and HP are kooky as well because they are now both sponsoring some Overwatch leagues. So it's pretty interesting to note that big money is following into esports as well. Again, I share these trends for two reasons. One is that it's interesting that things that we never would have thought could be a job are a job for a lot of people. It's interesting that our interests and our entertainment have shifted so dramatically, and I think there's something there and it's worth looking at. I always end these by taking a look at the uh, interesting lands of nerdy stuff, like maybe cosplay, almost always cosplay. And Stan Lee just had his Stan Lee LA Comic Con, and I thought there were some really great opportunities to look at some of the cosplay there. This, of course, being Handmaid's Tale. Let me see if I can tag us through a couple. Morty, Morty, you should check out this cosplay right here. It turns out it's not very hard. Just uh, one wig and a flask and some colored shirts. And then there's this. That's kind of fun and spooky. Uh, Stanley's LA Comic Con is one of the places where you can see some really super great cosplay. There's also a lot more opportunities to see it other places. And I'm always a fan of finding it all over the world, but... Yeah, sometimes you got to go with the goodies. Hey, I'm Chris Brogan. Hope you like this. Again, if you want to check this out for yourself, you don't have to take any of my word for anything. You can go to chrisbrogan.com slash CBM, click all the links for your own damn self, and you can find out what's going to work for you or what's not. Thank you so much for your time. Gareth says, by the way, that plant post you shared where they diluted a spinach leaf and put heart cells in it was amazing. Thank you. That's the kind of weird stuff I want to share because you never know who's going to be there. You never know what's going to click with someone. And who knows, maybe one of your big... Big business ideas will come right here from the brief. Drop me a line, chris at chrisbrogan.com. Always happy to talk with you.